All right, so today, today we have a lot of exciting new um, training and education. And as you've seen in the topic, today is episode five of how to attract abundance with meditation technology. And specifically, we're gonna talk about the science of bending reality. We're gonna talk about how we can actually bend reality with our thoughts and with our mind. Isn't that exciting, okay? For thousands of years, we thought that prayers or intentions or magical things that happened were just, just, just um, false belief. People went on witch hunts, and people just thought that it's not real. It's it's not scientific, and people were just imagining these things were happening. But now we have a lot of science to back up the power of intention, the power of our minds, of how we can use our minds and our intentions to actually change reality itself. And we're gonna talk about that in this webinar. So if you're here, take a look at this outline. So we're gonna talk a little bit about quantum physics and research that had been done within the last 100 years only that uh, shows the reality, a new concept of what reality actually is. We're gonna talk about mind over matter. How do you have actual mind over matter? How do you have, how do you have mind over machine? Can we actually influence how a machine functions with just our thoughts? How do our cells communicate? How do our cells in our bodies actually talk to each other? We're gonna discover that. Also, how to use your mind to overcome any disease. So we can talk about energy healing specifically. How, you're, uh, how we are antennas, the human antenna, how we are actual transmitters and receivers of signals and energy. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna share with you the manifesting formula. So it's exactly what you need to do in order to manifest anything in your life and how to master the attractance of, uh, the master the, the art of attracting abundance. If you don't know who I am, my name is David Wong and I'm a Qi energy um, practitioner. So Qigong energy. So Qigong is a practice, it's, it's kind of like the Asian yoga, except um, we move a lot. Uh, there's a lot of um, dynamic movement, and also the inventor of Qi coil and resonant wave systems, wellness technologies. I'm also a film producer and a music composer. So Qigong in Chinese medicine or Chinese uh, language basically means energy work. Qi is the concept of energy. It's the energy that binds everything together. The energy that's in your body, it's outside your body. It's the energy that connects everything in the universe, even the cosmos. So even the planets and the stars and everything in existence is connected by Qi energy. So with Qigong, what we're doing is we're learning how to manipulate our Qi energy. We're learning how to first be sensitive to it, just like in, in Star Wars. I'm going to make a lot of, lot of um, um, references from Star Wars because there's so much, so much overlap. Okay, uh, We're going to learn how to use the force. We're going to learn how to be force sensitive. You can learn how to tune yourself and be able to um, feel the connectedness of the whole universe. So who's excited about that? Okay. Um, so if you stay down to the end of this webinar, I'm going to give you a free secret frequency. So just like we do last week, every week we release a new mystery frequency. So stay until the end. I'm going to send you the link of this amazing frequency that's going to help your health. So here's a quick disclaimer. Okay, everything here is just for educational purposes. Nothing here will be intended to treat or heal or diagnose any disease. Disease. So, so hopefully in this webinar, I'm going to help you expand your awareness. In the Stone Age, or maybe in the um, in the uh, Iron Age, uh, people thought stones don't fall from the sky, right? They thought. Metal objects can't possibly overcome reality, I mean, uh, overcome gravity. And they thought, if you sell to the end of, of the earth, it will be an edge and you would fall off. So that was what people in the past thought. But now, obviously, due to somebody asking the question, hmm, do stones actually fall from the sky? Where did they come from? Somebody asked that question and they discovered there were meteorites. And then somebody asked the question, how do you get metal objects to float in the sky or overcome gravity? If somebody didn't answer that question, we'll never have airplanes. And somebody asked the question, what happens if you go to the edge of the earth? Is it, do you really fall off? 
And because we asked a question, now we know that the planet is not flat. It is round. So today, what kind of questions can we ask? And what kind of limiting beliefs are limiting our consciousness to expand uh, ability to be aware of what's actually happening in the universe? Okay, here's some questions that we can ask ourselves. For example, we think, most people think that time is absolute no matter where you are. Basically, there's a logical linear flow of time and you can't really go back in time and can go in the future. Okay, but what if you ask the question, what if time is not absolute? It's another question. Um, can something be in two places at the same time? Okay, it totally goes against conventional thinking. We think, well, it's impossible. How can something be in two places at the same time? Well, I'm going to show you exactly what we've discovered through quantum physics. Also, um, how about asking the question, do thoughts actually affect the things around you? Do thoughts actually re affect reality? That's the ultimate question, isn't it? Can our thoughts and our intentions actually change reality, change the world as we know it? And I don't mean like influence it in a very scientific way. I mean, in a very conventional way. I mean, like just by using your thoughts to instantly influence the existence or reality in many different things. And we're going to cover those different things. Okay. So somebody asked these questions within the last hundred years, and now we've discovered quantum physics, which totally goes against all the Newtonian, um, all the classical physics. It, it actually doesn't go against it, but it adds to it. It explains, it gives answers that it, uh, old classics couldn't answer about what reality is. So, but before we get to that, let's do a Qi energy healing exercise. And just like in our webinars, what we do is we actually do it. We don't just talk about it. We are going to actually do it. We're going to do a Qi energy healing exercise. All right. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. I need your feedback today. So either we can, we can have someone in the group today who really needs healing. If, if you are someone in the group right now, you're watching this and you really need healing for some specific problem that you have, then why don't you um, type it in the Q&A and let, let us know that that's what you want. So that's option one. Option two is we're going to all heal, heal ourselves uh, of something or whatever that you want. Okay, so if you're already healthy, then maybe you can uh, focus your healing energy on somebody who needs it or maybe just improve your your overall health some, somewhere. Okay, so option one uh, is to pick someone or someone will say they need healing for a specific thing. And then option two is we're all going to heal ourselves. If you're uh, watching this right now, I just want you to get in a comfortable position. If you're sta uh, It's better to do standing because that gets the energy moving and your blood pumping. If you're not standing, that's fine. You can just do it seated or even lying down. And what I want you to do is to just stand up tall and straight or sit up tall and straight. Just make sure your spine is nice and straight. If you're sitting on a chair, um, see if you can not lean back on the chair and just sit forward on the chair, but then keep your spine nice and straight like this. Keep your head nice and tall. And then when you keep your nice head nice and tall, just make sure everything relax, move your shoulders, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle everything underneath your, your head and below so that it kind of just hangs from your neck down. Like you're a puppet and then you have the string attached to your head and it's just hanging everything and everything's loose everything's loose everything's loose underneath so you can move it around shake it around with no body underneath this dangling string of your neck and your head so now you're nice and loose okay now you got that what you do put your hand on top of your belly your belly button so match up the middle of your palm as if there's a point here with your belly button Left hand first, and then right hand on top, if you are a male. And if you're female, right hand first, and then left hand on top, okay? So I'm male, so I'm going to left hand, then right hand, lock your thumbs like this. And then press gently into your tummy, and then do a nice massage in one direction. You can press in and massage your belly, like this. And then massage your belly the other direction. And then go the other direction again. 
and then we add the direction again. Okay, now I want you to close your eyes and just do some deep breathing for about 30 seconds. So deep breathing through your nose, breathe in, nice and slow breath, and try to focus on just how that breath feels. So you're breathing through your nose, you can feel the air going into your nose, up to your sinuses, and then down your mouth, and then down your throat, and into your chest, and into your lungs. Just feel that breath. Focus on how that breath feels. So you can feel the actual oxygen going into your nostrils and into your body, into your head, into the back of your throat, and then into your chest and your lungs. And as you exhale, just breathe out through your nose, and then feel the warm air coming out of your nose. So just really focus on that breath. Focus on the breath. Listen to the sound of your breath breathing in. Hear that wind of the air and the soft sound that it makes when it goes into your nostrils and the soft sound it makes the airy sound when you breathe out. Now I want you to focus on your tummy. You can feel your hands. Feel where your belly button is and then imagine that you're going into your belly button just about an inch. So put your awareness there and feel how that feels. Can you feel the belly button? Now when you're breathing in, I want you to feel your belly getting bigger. And then when you breathe out, your belly gets a little smaller. And when you breathe in, it gets a little bigger. Breathe out, it gets a little smaller. Okay, just continue that for the next 10 seconds or so. Now's a good time to turn on your awareness. So open up your ears. Try to listen to every little sound that's possible. What do you hear? All right, so we can continue that longer if you'd like, if you're doing this practice later on. I recommend staying that moment for even longer, but because of this webinar, we don't have much time. So let's go to our next part, which is we're going to do Qi energy activation. So we can bring our energy up, gather the energy, breathe in, breathe down, and gather energy in a big circle above you, breathe it in, and then relax and breathe out. Breathe in, relax and breathe out. Breathe in, relax and breathe out. Notice I'm looking up when I breathe in, I look up, my eyeballs are looking up, and then when I come down, my eyeballs look straight or slightly downwards. So that helps you to guide the chi and your awareness and your consciousness so that you can be more aware of the energy flow in your body. It's actually you're using your eyeballs, your gaze has an effect on where your awareness is. Now gather energy to the front. Bring it with your middle fingers and focus it onto your third eye. Imagine it going into your head in the middle and relax and then let it fall down, gather again. Relax, fall down, gather it again. Relax, fall down. Okay, gather right into your belly button. Imagine the white energy, healing energy going to your belly button. 
into your body and then relax. Breathe out, breathe in, relax. Make sure when you breathe in, don't hold your breath. Breathe in and don't tense or don't tense anywhere. Some people tense in their shoulders, some people tense in their necks or their throats. If you find yourself tensing up, just relax and just do it again. Also it helps when you do it slower, just do it slow and relax more. Alright, and then you, let's go back to our um, centering breath. We'll just call it the centering breath. So, cover your belly button, breathe, and then focus your awareness in your tummy again. Okay, now rub your hands together until you get really hot. Your head's getting hot. Okay, and then I want you to brush your hair like this. Feel your, your scalp, brush your ears, brush your face, brush your eyes, brush your neck. So I want you to brush down your neck and your shoulder, and then down your arm, down your fingers, and then brush again, and then turn your arm over, brush underneath your arm, and then on the back side of your hand, brush the other side, down your shoulders, down your arm, down your fingers, brush the other side, your arm and brush down your armpits to the side of your body, the other side, brush down your throat, and then brush down the center of your body, one side, and the other side, and then brush down behind your back, and then brush down behind your buttocks, and then in the front of your legs, so basically the front of your legs is the inside of your thigh, behind your legs, down each knee, around your knees, and so on. Down your shins, behind your legs, and then on the feet. Brush your feet on all sides of the feet. And then stomp and shake. Stomp and shake. Like you are shaking off, um, I don't know, shaking off all your bad energy. Just, just with it, like you have all this water and you're just flinging your arms. In your fingers and stomp it and like this like you have um, all this sand all over your body you're trying to shake off that sand and you try to stomp it all and let it shake off of you okay so that's the warm-up that's chi energy activation so at this point you probably feel uh, you probably feel balanced more energy you feel like you can you're more aware of your different parts of your body probably feel a little bit of heat, feel some tingling in your fingers, probably feel um, more awake, more alert. Um, things might seem brighter, you might have higher heightened senses, you might uh, see brighter colors or your ears might um, be more open, you can hear more things, you can taste more things, you can smell more things. So what you did is just activate your chi. So this is the beginning. And now we can do the healing. Since, and since so many people have requests, I think um, what we'll do is we're just gonna we're gonna teach you how to heal yourself. Okay, so what I want you to do is now we're in this heightened um, chi energy state. You activated chi. Now I want you to start focusing the chi into a certain point. What we want to do is to I want you to focus on that one thing that you need help healing with in your in your mind or your body. Okay. So if it's some kind of pain, then one easy thing is if, is to focus your awareness on that part of your body that has the pain. So if you have knee pain, then focus your knees. If you have neck pain, focus your neck. Okay. If you have um, if you are high blood pressure, then think of what you need specifically to happen in your body to reduce your high blood pressure. So maybe your blood vessels need to open up more because the more open and freer that the blood moves, then there's less blood pressure. So you, so pick something that you want to happen specifically in your body. So now we have a specific part of your body you want you to meditate with. So um, 
So what I want to do is to, first of all, smile, and then say thank you for a healthy body. And now I want you to just open up your hands to the sky, and then just just imagine there is this healing energy coming up from um, from the universe, or just from your happiest moment. Think of your happiest moment, and. Feel the love that you have for the universe and feel the love that you have from the higher power, whoever, whatever you believe in. Just um, imagine this Mother Earth and then Father Sky and just feel that love that nature has for you and that you have made for nature. So whatever emotion you can come up with. So if you love your children or you love your spouse, try to feel that love right now. And feel that in your heart, and then just imagine that feeling, and let it go through your whole, whole throughout your whole body. Okay. And start to feel like right now my hands feel really, really hot for some reason, so they're like heating up, and they're my right hand is getting really hot. So if your dominant hand is 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 um is right, then it'll usually get hotter than the other hand. Okay, so now what I want you to do is to imagine that positive energy, you're gathering it up. You're like this big receiver of energy and it's getting gathered up into your hands and into your body. And now it's going into that part that we talked about and we pinpointed. And we want to visualize now that positive energy, the healing energy of that part, restoring that part of your body back to its natural health. Because when we were born, we were naturally healthy and vibrant and energetic and abundant. So by naturally, we we're supposed to be healthy and have no disease. So let's just focus on having that natural health on that part of your body. And now imagine specifically and use your visualization to imagine what it's like to have that part of your body to do what it wants to do. So for example, if you have pain, then just imagine, first you need to know what, where the pain is coming from. If it's inflammation, which is most of the case, is just imagine the nerves just relaxing and then the swelling going away. Just imagine that it's already gone and then now the signals, electrical signals to those nerves are normal. So there's no more inflammation. You just imagine there's blood flowing through your blood vessels to that part of your body. And then the blood is flowing freely without any restriction. And then the blood is flowing from that part of your body with no restrictions to your heart. So the blood is moving in a natural and efficient way from your heart to your that part of your body replenishing the nutrients giving it all the energy and the nutrients that it needs to be normal now if it's the part of your body that you need help with let's say um yeah pain there then just imagine that part of your body being soft and supple because usually when there's pain it becomes blocked and it becomes um, it becomes rigid, it becomes um, tensed up, just like you have a s stiff shoulder just because of blocked energy. So now just imagine that energy flowing through naturally through that part of your body. Just imagine white energy going there and flowing through, flowing through that part of your body, wherever it is. And then just imagine that that part of your body um, is now pink and supple and soft and malleable and just relaxing and happy. So just imagine that part of the body being happy. You can smile and then use that smile sensation. When you smile, you can feel the sensation throughout your whole head, your ears, the back of your head. 
And when you feel that, that's good. And you want to send that vibration, that energy, to that part of your body. And then imagine that part as also smiling with you. Now, if you have uh, something to do with uh, fatigue, so you talk about kidneys, so just now imagine your kidneys, imagine there's yellow energy going to your kidneys. Yellow energy and smile, and just imagine the yellow energy just filling up your kidneys. And then imagine now your kidneys are nice and strong and pink and supple and full of nutrients without any inflammation, without any pain, just like a baby, soft and supple and happy. So imagine that energy flowing through your kidneys, the yellow color, and just brightening it all up. That bright gets bright, the light gets brighter and brighter. Okay, just focus on that. Okay, so if you have a part of your body, it helps you actually put your hand over it. You don't even have to make contact. Actually, it's better. You, sometimes it's good to make contact, but also feel your hand on top of that part of your body without contact, because then you can feel the heat. You can feel the electromagnetic field. Okay, so if it's, um, well, we had another issue here. If it's uh, feeling anxious, right? So let's see your heart is tense and feels anxious so put your hand over your heart okay and first you don't need to touch it but just feel the energy of your heart that's on your left side right here and then just imagine that your your hands are converting that energy from from the universe and turn it into green energy send it to your heart and then just imagine your heart is now released and relaxed and pumping and and uh, pumping normally and becoming stronger and your muscles are strong and and uh, all these electrical signals are firing at the proper timing and all that stress all the stress and chemicals are being flushed out and now you're full of happy chemicals like dopamine and uh, now that's filling your whole body from your heart. So smile and imagine that green energy making your heart brighter and brighter in color. So now you can even touch it and put your hands on there and then feel it, feel your heart beating. And smile and say thank you for such a, for having such a, um, thank you for being such a uh, strong heart and healthy heart. Okay, so just stay in that moment if you're doing this and um, so basically just keep those positive thoughts and the more specific you can be about what you want to see happen and just visualize that happening to your specific part of your body then the more effective it's going to be and I'm going to explain why in a second. Okay, so if you have some psychological issues um, is usually connected to a part of one of your organs. So you have depression, it's connected to your lungs. And if you don't know what these are, you look up the five healing, sen uh, five healing sounds. So there's a sound, there's an organ, and there's some emotions that are all coordinated with each other. So anger has a certain um, emotion. Anger comes from the heart, right? Um, there's depressions with the lungs, and then um, fatigue from the kidney. So, so uh, go look at some of my videos about those organs. So if you're, you're conditioned or you have some kind of, something that says bipolar, so that could be uh, sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're depressed, or sometimes you're moody. So what you can do is find out which organ is regulating the, uh, the sugar level. I think it's, it has a lot to do with sugar level. And, um, and then focus your, your healing intention onto that organ in your body. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is just to imagine yourself being completely happy and, and balanced mentally. And just imagine yourself um, being in a situation and being balanced and not having any, uh, just being happy and 
in a uh, relaxed way and being able to maintain that. And I just imagine the, a scene in your life where you're going to be happy and, and, um, and free from any of, of the anxiety. So this is something you can do any time of the day. And the more you do it, and I'm going to explain to you how you can make it more effective at the end of this webinar. There are specific steps that you can do and specific things that you need in order to make this energy healing more effective. Okay, let's talk about the difference between classical and quantum physics. Classical mechanics is a physical theory of deterministic nature and is governed by the principle of causality. Well, quantum mechanics is a physical theory of probabilistic nature. It is based on the concept of probability and observation. Okay, a whole bunch of fancy words. What does that mean? Classical mechanics. Okay, stuff we learn in, in high school that we've learned for the last 300 years. Okay, um, basically F equals MA. Force equals mass times acceleration. Okay, Determin deterministic nature means that it's, it's set. You can't change it, all right? You got F, you got M, you get A, you put it in force times mass, acceleration, and you get a result, it's always the same, it doesn't change. You can't change, you can't take energy away from uh, a system. Does that make sense? You can't add energy or take away energy from this, uh, uh, from the system. The system is always balance each other out. So that's what I mean by deterministic nature. It's a closed system. Okay, and it's governed by the principle of causality, which means if A happens, then B happens. If A didn't happen, then B is never going to happen. So one thing has to cause the other thing to happen. Okay, so that's classical, and that's what most uh, this conventional science. Everybody knows these, is, and that's what everybody accepts. So what's quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics is a physical theory of probabilistic nature, which means that a particle is not definite. The particle is just a probability. There's only a chance of it being there. Why is something? Why? What? Why is what you're seeing right now? Or why is your hand? Why can you feel your hand there? Is it's not actually 100% there. It's just a probability that it's going to be there. Or if, some, or if it's an electron is in the, in the universe, it doesn't mean it's always there. It's only a probability that's, uh, that's, that's going to be there. Okay, So quantum mechanics is based on probability. That everything in the universe is just a probability. There's no set thing. There's no um, thing that is always going to be the same every time in every point in time at every point in space. Okay, so that's the difference. The next major difference is the uh, concept of probability and observation. What does that mean? Is that something is different based on the observer and based on when it was observed or whether the observer was there in the first place. Okay, so some is, um, there's an experiment and that's going to lead me to the next thing. Okay, this will explain it better. The double split experiment what they're doing is they're firing these particles into a, uh, into a shield and the shield had two slits on it. I don't want to go into the details of how every thing works. It gets pretty technical. But they're firing these, these electrons through these two slit, two, two holes. And then when they shoot into the, and when they're captured on the screen, what you should see is just two lines, right? Because you're shooting these particles through these two holes, you should see two lines. But what happens is that all these other lines show up. Why is that? What, what they saw was they saw a whole bunch of lines instead of just two lines. What happened? Okay. So basically what happened was that that particle turned into a wave. And then it's like a wave. Like you drop a, drop a pebble into the pond, it, it makes this wave, right? Like this circle that keeps expanding and then there's many, many circles. So what happened was that that one particle turned into a wave and then that wave emanated out from the two slits. And then when they, whenever the waves overlapped each other, it created a line. So what they showed was that the particle turned into a wave. How can it be possible? I thought people thought that particles were particles, waves were waves, but that wasn't what happened. They showed that the particle can be both depending on whether somebody was observing it. Isn't that amazing? The, the mere observation of the experiment was able to turn the, the behavior of the electron. Okay, so that's my crude way of explaining how, how the, exper uh, the experiment works. But the, but the, um, 
But the concept that you need to grasp is that this electron was uh, uh, the, this electron showed that this experiment showed that electrons can be both things at, at the same time. It can be two things at the same time, and it can be two places at the same time, because it behaved differently depending on whether somebody observed it, was watching it or not. Okay, so it means that our consciousness, our observation, actually changed the results of a scientific experiment. And it changed the behavior of the electron just by our consciousness, with our thoughts, with our awareness of it. So what does that mean? Are you guys following? You guys getting this? If you don't get it, that's fine. Okay? Just understand that um, basically they showed that something that was not possible was now seen very clearly that it was actually happening. Okay? It's called non-local um, existence. The same thing happens when two electrons were once uh, bonded together and resonating together at the same frequency. They separate the two electrons by thousands and millions of miles, uh, thousands of miles, and then they measure the electrons again. And then when they did something to one electron, the ele electron reacted in the same way, where there is nothing connecting them together. Okay, so something is called quantum entanglement. Is that once something is entangled together? in the quantum realm, okay, outside of our normal dimension. They are, they still communicate with each other instantly. Not the speed of light, not faster than the speed of light, instantly, without any lag time in between. Because if you have one electron on one side of the Earth and the other side of the Earth, I think it takes seven seconds for the light to travel from one side of the Earth to the other side. But what they found was that they reacted instantly in synchronicity. Okay, so which shows that there's some way that connects these electrons, some channel that connected them together that we could not perceive and that um, classical physics could not explain. Okay, so that's what this mixed experiment is about. You can read about it. It's called a double split experiment. Okay, so depending on whether there was an observer or not, and if the electron would force a particle and a wave at the same time. So mind over machine. So there's many, many uh, experiments that have been done based on quantum, on the quantum field. And in the, in the 12 year period, there's nearly about 2.5 million experiments done uh, of mind over machine. And it turned out that 52% of the trials were intended in the direction, okay, okay, so here, here's what it is, okay? So people were experimenting with heads or tails. Let's say you flip a coin. Okay, how many percent chance is going to be heads? How many percent chance? 50%, right? How many percent chance is going to be tails? 50% chance, okay? We all know by the mathematical probability, it's always going to be 50-50. So they made a device. Basically, it, it, it turns, uh, it becomes heads or tails. This device, this machine flips, uh, flips a coin or whatever in, in the machine, and then it either shows a green light or a red light. So there's basically two, two ways it can go. So what they did is they had people sit in the room with the device and then they told them, okay, we want you to use your intention to make it heads uh, more than it, its tails. And what do you think happened? And they did this 2.5 million times over the 12 years with different scientists around the world. They got people to, to look at the machine and just use their intention and say, okay, I want this machine to show heads instead of tails. And then they had a bunch of people say, I want this machine to show tails. What was the, what was the result? It should be 50-50, right? So the result was that actually 51 to 54% was in the favor of the, um, of the uh, machine going in the favor of the, of the person's intention. Okay, now an extra one to 4% may not seem like a lot, but statistically speaking, it's a it's a it's a freaking giant step. Okay, because that doesn't happen, and the only way to happen is a one to a trillion chance of that happening. So something is happening when people are using their intention to change what's happening with this machine to flip heads or tails. What was happening? And this has been proven over 12 years in 2.5 million trials. Okay, and what else they find was that it doesn't matter whether the person was looking at the machine, 
how strong their concentration was, how the lighting was, what the background noise was, or even print with people, uh, other people that were present. It didn't seem to make any difference in results. So as long as a person just will, just use their willpower to make it heads or tails, that's all they need to do. And they had some influence over a significant percentage of the time. Who's amazed by that? Isn't that crazy? And this was done like millions of, of um, literally millions of times they've tested this. So let me ask you a question. What if we can not now know that we can actually influence a machine to do things that we wanted to do? If we can influence our, the machine to do a certain uh, thing, what else can we do? How powerful is our, the power of intention? How powerful are our minds and our thoughts then? What can we actually do with our minds and our thoughts? So let's look at how cells communicate. Jack Benavisti, he's a immunologist. And he was, he was also doing some water memory experiments. And um, the water memory experiments were basically people who filled up uh, something, uh, a jar with a bunch of water, and then they put another substance in there. I don't know what, I, I forgot what experiment it was, but basically they diluted it to the point where there's nothing left. There's no more substance, it's just 100% water. And when they use that water for um, treating a certain thing, let's say they, the, the water was going to inhibit, um, inhibit some kind of uh, chemical in the body. The, the, the water at the end of the experiment did the same thing as the chemical in the beginning, even though there's no chemical. So basically the water had memory. It remembered that it was used to be, or maybe were mingling with the chemical in the first place, even though all the chemical was taken out. So that's the water, water memory experiment. So Jack Benavisti got um, inspired by this experiment. And what he did was he wanted to find out how cells, or human cells, or any cells in the universe actually communicate with each other. And his theory was that molec molecules have a signature frequency. Every molecule on the planet has a specific frequency. And then these frequencies travel in electromagnetic fields and they travel at the speed of light. Okay, so in one second, it's going to travel 380,000 kilometers. In two seconds, it'll be about 700,000 kilometers away from you. So electromagnetic fields travel that fast. Because he thought, okay, conventional science that it says that our, um, our biology is based on chemistry. Okay, it's a lock and key system. You have one molecule, a protein, and if you want to absorb, it has to have a key and lock and has to collide with the other uh, molecule and then they have a chemical reaction. Well, the problem with that is it doesn't explain um, how come we experience our emotions so quickly. Okay? Let's say you get anger, you get joy or sadness or fear. That happens almost instantaneously. You can feel it throughout your whole body, right? And that's a chemical reaction. But if, if things had to knock each other and lock together like this, and then we have so many molecules. Okay, let's say one protein molecule. For every one protein molecule, there's 10,000 water molecules in our bloodstream. So in order for that one protein molecule to, by chance, connect with another one of our molecules to make a, make a chemical reaction, was like having a bunch of tennis balls in a swimming pool and hoping one, tes one red tennis ball is going to hit one blue tennis ball that you threw into the pool. Okay? So it was very unlikely that that was happening. And even if that happened, it'll take a long time for the for, to to toss the tennis balls and and mix it all up together so that these two balls would actually connect. Okay, so something else must his theory is that something else must be communicating these um, uh, between the cells so that it caused these chemical reactions to happen. And what he found was that he used it, uh, frequencies in the audio range, so to twenty to twenty thousand hertz. It's the same stuff we use, same frequencies range we use in our chico in our chico app. And what he found was that by using a frequency of the substance, let's say we have a, um, let's say we have a chemical that um, helps you release dopamine, makes you happy, okay? So he recorded the frequency of that chemical. And with just the frequency, he played it to the cells. And the cells responded in the same way as if it received that chemical, even though there's no chemical there by just using the mere frequency of it, okay? So he was able to do that. Isn't that amazing? So he proved that 
um, frequencies is actually how cells communicate and how it actually um, triggers the chemical reactions in your body. He was able to basically fool your biology system, fool your body to thinking that it was actually interacting with that substance by just using the frequency when there's no substance that exists in the system whatsoever. He was amazed. He was just mind blown. I'm totally mind blown. Okay. And guess what else happened? When he blocked the magnetic field so that the cells couldn't um, receive any signals, all the chemical reactivity, uh, all the chemical reactions stopped in the cell. Okay, so now the, 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 the notion that all our cells need to have a locking key, some trigger, uh, some key has to open the lock in order to trigger a chemical reaction, maybe that's not true. Okay, and now we find a lot of study that shows that it's frequency, it's electromagnetic frequency that um, allows our cells to communicate. And that's exactly what's behind our Qi Cola and our resonant wave technologies. We're using frequencies that specifically basically tune your cells and program your cells to do whatever it needs to do without any, any substances, without any external um, chemical or anything. We're just using the frequency of it. And this is what Jack Benavisti um, was able to show. So I'm totally mind blown. Here's even more. You guys ready? You guys ready for more mind blowing? <laughs> okay, mind over disease and energy healing. So Target and Sitcher, what they did was they wanted to do an experiment of energy healing. And they assembled all types of healers. And they were, um, and they worked with uh, AIDS patients. They're all double blind, under double blind conditions. All they, all they had was they had the name, the photo of the person, and the T cell counts. And then they distributed these, um, these envelopes with the person's name, the photo, and T cell counts. And they gave them to all these healers. And every once a day, they open, a, open an envelope and then they'll have their picture. And then for one hour, uh, they're gonna, they have the intention of lowering the T cell counts or raising the T cell counts. I forgot what it was. So every person that uh, was in the experiment um, that was in the, in the treatment group had a healer heal them or energy heal them for one hour. And then they got healing from every single of the healers. So guess what the result was? And by the way, it, uh, they assemble all kinds of healers. It didn't matter what healer they were using. They had shamans who like did chants and drumming and dancing. They had uh, qigong practitioners like myself. They had uh, just they had Christians and Anglicans who did just prayer. They had people who who did um, some other kinds of energy healing and, and visualization. Uh, but it didn't matter. They had all kinds of healers. Forty percent of the people in the control group that didn't get any energy healing died from their AIDS. 100% of the treatment group stayed alive. And not only that, they were much healthier in every way com compared to the people who survived the control group. That was the result. Now, what they did after that is they repeated the studies because they were not happy with the results. They said, Let's make it more scientific. So what they did was they did the results again. They um, spread out the, uh, they had more people. They had a bigger group of people. And what they found was the same thing. Significantly fewer AIDS defining illnesses, improved T cell levels, fewer hospitalizations, fewer visits to the doctor, fewer new illnesses, less severity of disease, better psychological well-being. The dis differences were decisive. For example, the treatment group had six times fewer AIDS-defining illnesses and four times fewer hospitalizations at the end of the study than the control. Okay, so that's what they did. Well, not just 40% healthier, they actually survived, whereas the control group who didn't get any treatment, 40% of them were dead. Okay, so not only did they survive, not all 10 out of 10 survived, they were a lot healthier than the ones who did survive in the control group who didn't get treatment. Okay, so it improved every aspect of their health, mentally, emotionally, okay, just from the healing. And then by the way, these healers never met the person. They never they never met the person in they never never at, at their physical location. This is all done remotely. Every healer was in their own location. They never met the patient and um, they never knew them before and all they did was just once uh, for one hour a day, just just focus their intention 
on healing this one, one person at a time. Okay, so that's just one study. There's many studies of this showing the same thing. And the in, important part is, you're probably asking, well, if that's the case, is it possible to have, do some people heal better than others? Like healers. Like if, if there's a healer, is healer A better than healer B? Like more effective? What makes healer A better than healer B? What do they do? What is, what is the determining factor that makes somebody a better healer than others? Who wants to know that? Because if you know that, then you know how you can heal yourself. And you know how you can help heal other people better, more effectively. And the point of this webinar is attracting abundance, right? Because I'm going to show you how you can use the healing energy the same way that you use to manifest healing in other people and yourself. You can use it to manifest anything that you want to attract abundance in your life. Okay, so which healers are most effective? And this is what they found through many different experiments from different people. They gathered all the data and they found that method and style doesn't, didn't matter. Okay, It didn't matter if they were Buddhist or Christian or agnostic or atheist or whatever religion they are. It didn't matter what style it is. Some people, they did, uh, you know, they chanted and they hit the drum or, or they, you know, did some kind of dance or some people, they did qigong or some people use their hands. Some people just use their minds. Some people use visualization or use the crystals. Some people use stones. It didn't matter what style they did. What did matter, though, it was how experienced they were. And then they found that whoever um, had the mindset of just being the conduit of energy had a much higher chance of effectiveness. And the people were healed a lot better than people who thought they were the source of the healing. Okay? So the concept says there's two kinds of people, healers. Either healers that think they're the water or the healers think that they're the hose. Okay? So what kind of healer do you want to be? And they found that the healers that thought they were just the hose where the just the healing goes flows through them are were a lot more um, uh, effective than the ones who thought that they were the water and they were the source of the healing. Okay. So, what other things can you do to become a better healer? We're gonna get into that in a bit. In a, in a bit. But we're gonna first cover the next part, which is the human antenna. What does that mean? So, if you remember, basically, it shows that we are actually antennas. We actually can enhance the reception of radio signal or TV signal just by touching it because it turns our body into, into reception, we are antennas. So what a scientist did, her, his name is Elmer Green, is that he measured, he, he, he was studying these energy healers and he was trying to figure out what energy, what actual energy came out of these energy healers. So he connected a whole bunch of machines to them and he found that he, there was this huge surges of electromagnetic, uh, electrostatic energy that they uh, emanated while they were healing. Now, for a normal person, when they're just standing still and just breathing and doing nothing, or just the heart's just breathing, uh, beating, you will produce electrostatic energy of about 10 to 15 millivolts on the EEG. But what he found, great, 63 years old, great, 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 that's very young, and... Um, what he found was that while they were meditating, that energy went from 10 millivolts to three volts. Okay, so remember one millivolt is one thousandth of a volt. So it went from 10 to 3,000 while they were meditating. Okay, and then while they were healing, that went up even more. It shot up to 190 volts. 190 volts. So it went from 10 millivolts, which is, let's say, is 10. And during meditation, it went up to 3,000. And then during the actual healing, it went to 190,000 times with three more zeros. 190,000 with three more zero, zeros. What's that? 190, one, two, three, plus three more zeros. So it went to 190 million. Okay. So it went from 10 to 190 million millivolts. How many more times than that? I think it's like... 50,000 times more. And, and guess where that energy came from? They put the, the EEG all through the body. And guess where that energy came from? Who can guess? Which part of the body? Okay, remember this is electrostatic energy. So like you rub yourself on a carpet or, or walk along carpet and you touch a doorknob, you get that spark. That's the uh, energy, actual electrostatic energy. 
It was actually the Dantian. Remember when, when we did the meditation, our belly button and behind the belly button. They, he found that the energy, the voltage, was coming from the Dantian. Isn't that amazing? For thousands of years, you know, Qigong practitioners were saying, oh yes, Dantian is the sea of Qi. Dantian is the source of the Qi energy. It's where the energy is. And then people say, oh yeah, sure, I'll just believe that, whatever you say. But now, they measure it and say, yes, that's actually where the voltage is coming from. Isn't that amazing? So now we're just rediscovering, now, in modern times, what people have known for thousands of years. So, human antenna. Um, so, Qigong, and once more. Actually, they found that when we do the Qigong movements, we actually create electromagnetic fields. So, as we're moving our bodies during the meditation, or even Tai Chi, like we used to do Tai Chi, right? Uh, all those movements create electromagnetic fields. And the, that's not surprising because obviously our, our body is electromagnetic fields and when we move, the field moves with it. But what's even more surprising was that the people that are watching, let's say somebody is watching you doing Tai Chi or Qigong, when they put on the measurements or the, 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 the sensors on their body, of the people just watching, they had the same, they fired the same reactions as if the, they were actually doing the Tai Chi themselves and doing the Qigong themselves. Okay, what the heck is going on? What's causing it? So just imagine you're doing this Qigong, all right, and then your friend is just sitting there watching it. You can put you know, brain sensors and body sensors all over his body, and it will show that his body is firing those signals to his muscles the same way as you, without him actually moving at all. And you know what's more? Not only can you feel those signals firing when he's not moving, that person observing it will also have a magnetic field around them. Does that make sense? Is it getting a little bit complicated? So let's say that um, there's a sensor here, right? Okay. It, uh, there's a sensor here, and I move my hands on a sensor, and the sensor is going to pick up my magnetic field. Okay? That's obvious. So you can measure. I can send electromagnetic energy to this ball or this to this um, to the sensor. I measure it. Now what happens is, let's say that I... I uh, you become a volunteer and say, okay, come here, sit in front of this ball and this sensor. I'm going to go into the other room uh, or I'm, I'm just going to go across the room and then I'm going to do my, my qigong and then you're watching me and then you put your hands on the ball. Guess what happens? The same frequencies that I emitted while I was doing the qigong will get sent to you and you will send it to the, to the sensors, as if you were doing the qigong yourself. Okay, is that mind blowing? Everybody says blown. <laughs> okay, so that's why I we do these qigong um, training on this webinar, and how powerful it is. I'm real like I'm reading these studies, and I realize how powerful what we're doing this because you may not even have to do the movements and you're just watching what I'm doing or somebody's watching you and the electromagnetic signals will fire in the same way just because they're watching the video and this is this is something that happened uh, last week is um, one of our attendees had this huge headache this migraine that had uh, that was uh, had this problem for weeks right Nelson and then um, just through the webinar, after watching the webinar, he didn't do any of the exercises in the webinar, but just from watching the webinar, his migraine that he had for weeks went away. So, so that's what's happening. Like um, while, while you're watching it, your, your, your subconscious and your, and your inner body is actually doing the exercises. And then you're, you're basically creating those electromagnetic fields with your body without even knowing it. And yeah, I have the oracle playing in the back, which is actually enhances my own electromagnetic field. 
Okay, so when we're on the webinars like this, what happens is that we tune to each other. So what you're watching right now, we're actually becoming resonant with each other. So it's like two tuning forces tuning each other. And when we start tuning to each other, you'll start to experience what I'm experiencing and I'll start experiencing what you're experiencing. We kind of connect it. So if you're experiencing the uh, the Qi energy right now, like Qi energy, or uh, I mean, if, if you have it playing, or if I even had it playing, and I'm getting that energy from there, and I'm doing the Qi and you're watching it, you're actually receiving that energy, or you're actually creating it inside yourself. Okay? So based on these research is is that is showing evidence that that's happening and we already see the results it's happening in our webinars uh, and people are giving us that, that feedback okay so what else does um uh does qigong do so they did study of qigong practitioners against and they found that there's an electromagnetic energy can bring both, both hands usually more uh from the dominant hand so if you're right-handed you get more from your right hand and so on and compared to people who were not trained in uh, energy healing, uh, Qigong practitioners had 33% more energy coming from their hands. There's also a study done on Tibetan monks in Himalayas who live in freezing temperatures. Who's heard of this? And they were able to mentally lower their metabolism by 60% and be able to raise their body temperature by 9.4 degrees. Okay? These are people living in the Himalayas. It's negative, like, it's freezing temperature all the time, freezing climates. And they're able to sleep in just a toga without any problems. How did they do it? For a regular person, how much does their metabolism drop, usually? A reg for a regular person, metabolism drops only 10 to 15% during sleep. And now, if you're an experienced meditator, you'll be able to decrease it by 17% at best. Like some of the best meditators, they can make their heart rate drop and make their metabolism drop. But these monks, they were able to drop their metabolism 60% during meditation. And they were able to raise their body temperature so high just for meditating that they're able to survive and be comfortable in these freezing temperatures day in and day out. How did they do it? So what they did was they put, they, they invited them to a lab and they put you know, uh, measurements on, on all of their bodies, especially their brains. And they find out what it is it that happened to their brain waves. What, what was happening in their brain when we're, they were doing that meditation? And what did they find? Now, most people conventionally think that when we go into meditation, what brain wave do we need to be in? Is it um, theta, delta, alpha, beta, or gamma? Which is the, what, what is the, like, the target um, brainwave that we want to be in when we meditate? So conventionally, people think that we need to get into alpha, which is like in between the wake and, and the dream state. Awake, somewhere in between, somewhere around there. Where we are like, slow down our thoughts and we are not really um, uh, alert. Okay. Um, so when they measured these monks, what they found was that they started in beta, then then after a few minutes they went to alpha, and then after a few, uh, uh, pretty shortly after that they went to gamma of twenty to seventy hertz brainwaves, some of the highest brainwaves that they ever measured in history. Okay, so where so they were in these high beta, high gamma brainwaves, it went into hyperdrive basically. Your brain went to hyperdrive. So we're, we're, when your brain goes into those states, those high states, what's actually happening? Is it unlocking some kind of higher consciousness and higher awareness? Well, that's what they measured in these bunks, is that they are able to manipulate their body and, and increase their body temperature, lower their heart rates in superhuman um, ways by being able to have their minds to go into super high Hyperspace, they call it. And what they found was that monks that had more experience, more training, were able to get the highest brainwaves and were able to sustain them the longest. Okay, so what is all this about? Well, the point is that you can train yourself to become a better meditator. 
And meditating is not all just about zoning out and then getting into this calm thing. Okay, meditating can also be about high energy, focused, high awareness, intention. You know, your brain wave goes into this, these high states. So, one if you're able to master the art of meditating, so that you can project your intentions and manifesting more. Meditating is kind of like learning the piano or learning the instrument. Some people can play piano better than others because they practice more. Some people are just naturally good at piano. They just pick it up like some children or prodigies. They sit on the piano and they play like, like a professional when they have no training, right? But most of us, we need to learn and we need to practice. So how do we practice this? How do we become better at intention? Okay. Okay, so now we get to the part of um, the formula for intention. Remember we said in the beginning of the webinar, we can show you how you can uh, increase your manifesting ability. Who wants to do that? Who wants to be able to increase their a ability to send an intention or to manifest something? Okay, we showed you how to do healing. But what else can you do? What else can you can you can you alter in reality? How else can you be in reality? We can show that you can affect electronic equipment with your mind. We can show you how you can affect the output of uh, of heads or tails with your mind. What else could you do? Okay. So there's a quick formula for um, being more effective. Okay. So here it is. Is here's what you need to do. Okay. There's more after this, but then this is generally what we do. First, we enter into an intention space. So we need to find a place where we're comfortable without distractions. Um, it's a healthy environment, not crowded, uh, without, without a lot of electronic equipment. Um, but how, uh, and then we want to raise the energy. We want to get into that alpha state. We want to calm our minds. Then we want to focus on an anchor. Okay, Whether that is a uh, function, a body part, or breath, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it could be a movement, it could be a chant, it could be a sound, it could be a frequency, it could be a repetitive sound. Okay, then we want to kind of raise our focus and raise our awareness of the present. Then we want to resonate with compassion and make a meaningful connection. So you want to activate your heart, activate your emotions, activate your love, love emotion. Then you state your intention or you visualize that intention. Then you rehearse in your mind. Visualize it in every detail as if it's happening right now. Use all your five senses to do it. Okay, and then after that, uh, you the timing is important too. You want to choose a good time to do it. You know, do it when you're happy and well. Don't do it when you're stressed out or unhappy in a bad mood. Then you want to surrender and uh, the power to universe. Let, let the higher power take over and and just let go. Don't don't hold on to it too much. And then you take action. Okay. So when we when we started the energy today, uh, the energy healing today, you know, we 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 got comfortable. We got into a position that allowed us to focus and be aware, aware, away from distractions, then we raised the energy, energy by doing our, um, our centering meditation with our, hands, you know, with our hands over our bellies. We center our energies because when you center, then your mind gets into your belly, so you're more into the awareness of your presence rather than in your head. You move your awareness away from your head and your thoughts down into your guts. Then we created an anchor, and the anchor I gave you today was the breath. I wanted you to focus on the breath. Now you can also use our frequencies from the Chico app as the anchor, as the sound. You can just play the sound or you can use the electromagnetic frequency from Chico or Oracle. And that frequency, the repetitive sound, also becomes an anchor so that you can get into those deep alpha uh, meditation states. Then we go into Peak focus. Peak focus is awareness of the presence. All those movements actually help you to get that peak focus as you as you use your whole body in order to activate your chi energy. Then remember, I told you how you can use your your love and your good intentions and the smile in order to enhance and make that connection. And then I told you to state a specific intention. Okay, so a specific intention was either to make the, the blood flow to that area or reduce the swelling and inflammation or it could be to add energy and make it healthy, right? So it had to be specific. Then I, then I helped you to visualize it was happening. 
with your mind. Just seeing your organs get pink or see your organs um, uh, healthy or bright. And then, um, and then just letting go and just thanking uh, higher power for, for helping you achieve the health. Okay, so, so in this webinar, we practice doing all that intention. So the more you practice, then the, the better you're going to be at achieving uh, intention. So how do you become a, a master manifester? The you know, more coherent your brain waves, they did studies and they found that the more coherent your brain waves were, so the more balanced your mind was, um, that, that means your left and right brain, your upper and lower brain, if they're all fired in the same frequency and they all have resonated at the same time, then the more powerful and effective your intentions are. And the more ability you're able to control uh, reality, bend reality. They, and they, they know this because people who had the most coherent, most balanced brain waves were the best healers. Also, to become the best healer or the best, best transmitter, you have to also be a good receiver. Okay? Just imagine there's walls around you. If you have thick walls around you in your consciousness, you're close minded, if you're stubborn and you're close, you know, you just block everything. Then not only do you block everything coming in, you actually block everything going out too. So if you want to be a good transmitter, you want to be able to transmit intentions into the world. Let's say you want to be healthier, you want to be happier, you want to make a better planet, you want to have re reduced disease in the world, you want to, you know, heal a loved one. Then first, make sure your walls are thin. You don't have thick walls because you need to learn how to receive before you can actually um, send. Okay, so make sure you have thin walls. So you're open-minded, and you are you're malleable, you're you're changeable, you adapt. And the more that you can reduce your self-awareness, the more that you can remove all judgment. So remember, when you're focusing on your breath and you're doing those those exercises, what that helps you do is to anchor yourself into that. Um, into that mind state where you're not, where you where you don't care. You don't have to think about anything. You don't have to judge anything. You don't have to say something is good or bad. There's no judgment. You're not even aware of yourself. You're just experiencing. You're just experiencing the moment, feeling the feelings, feeling the movement of your body. So when you can do that, then you become more powerful. And you're able if you can raise your, your uh, chi energy, get yourself into those higher states of consciousness, then you become, you become more aware of a higher level of reality. What else do you need? Here's some more things that you can do to enhance your manifestation ability. Okay? Motivation, urgency, belief, confidence, compassion, and true empathy. Okay? So you need to have some kind of motivation. It has to be something that's urgent. Okay? You heard of the miraculous healings of people who are um, able to heal people instantly. And usually what happens is that person has a lot of urgency. They say, this person is about to die, I need to heal them. And they also have a lot of belief. They say, I believe this person is going to be healed. Or, and they have a lot of confidence. They have confidence that it's going to happen. But most importantly, they have compassion. They have true empathy. They actually have love and empathy for the person that needs the healing. Okay, So if you want to be a master... Manifesto, you need to evaluate yourself, ask yourself, do you have these qualities inside yourself? And if you don't, that's fine because you can develop these qualities. They also did studies on what didn't work and what worked. Because some people, um, when they send intention, they don't do it quite the most effective way. And they did a study on this as well. Okay? Um, they did they, they test. So, uh, of healing uh, a certain thing. Actually, they had a, cha a Qigong master and they told him to send uh, four different types of intentions to a, to a uh, cancer cell. So they used cancer cells in a, in a dish and then they told him to use his mind and send four different kinds of intentions. So the first intention was to ask the cancer cells to return to their natural order. The second intention was to, to say, let God's will be done. The third way was to be acceptance of uh, whatever is happening and just accept it. The fourth way was to be specific about what he wanted to happen. And in this case, he wanted to have only three cells, three cancer cells to be left in the dish. 
So which one had the most effect, do you think? Which one had the most effect? So the first one was, he asked, natural order. So everything, everything just nat returned as natural order. Second one was, let God's will be done. Third one was, whatever happens, happens. Fourth one was, I want only three cells to be existent. So the most effective one was being specific. The one where he, his intention was sending, uh, that said he wanted only three cells to, to exist, that actually uh, reduced the most cancer cells in the dish. The second one, however, was asking things to return to natural order. Okay? Let's say that's out of a, out of a, out of a hundred, that's a hundred. Asking for God's will to be done only had 50% effectiveness. So it's good, but only half as effective as if you were asking for the natural order to return. The one that had no effect whatsoever was just asking for whatever happens, happens, or just accepting whatever is, is. Okay, so think about that. This is actually, this is actual science, science experience showing what the intention can do to reduce cancer cells in a dish. So when you send out intentions, be mindful of what kind of attitude you have. Is your attitude, okay, I'm going to do this, send this intention, but, you know, whatever happens, happens. Then most likely you're going to fail. Or if you say, okay, I'm going to send this intention out, but, you know, whatever God's will, let, let it happen, then happen. Then you'll only be 50% effective. Um, so, but if you say, let it return to the natural order of things, then you're more effective. And the most effective one, even more than that, is to have a specific outcome. Okay, so you might be asking, okay, remember this? webinar, uh, the title is How to Attract Abundance. That's what the series is about. So you're probably asking, does this work for money? You say, oh, it's great. That, it's great that you can heal people. It's great that you have scientific research that say that you can make it more heads than tails or more tails than heads. Or you, you have scientific research that you can heal people remotely and all these electromagnetic money fields and all these frequencies. But I, right now I'm broke, I'm poor, and I need money. I have no job. So does it work for money? Well, they actually did a, uh, another um, a test, experiment, of a group of med meditators who sought to influence the monetary growth of crude materials price and the misery index. And this was done uh, in this, uh, basically it's um, based on transcendental meditation. There's a lot of scientific research on transcendental meditation. So what they did is like, this group of people, they um, meditated to make the uh, materials price fall, fall, crude material price. Let's say they wanted the oil price to go down. Surprisingly, it went down by 13%. Okay, so if they can make the prices of, of, of crude materials change on the stock market, if we can do that, and that's involving money, then don't you think that you can do something in your own life? Yeah, I was surprised too, just saying that God's will uh, is only 50%. And that, the reason is because when we say God's will, we kind of like, we, we're not specific, right? We don't know, maybe it's not specific enough. And um, yeah, it's just basically, the, the more specific you are, the, the better. By the way, a lot of the references I, I got from this um, webinar are from uh, these books by Lynn McTaggart. So if you want to read them, you, I encourage you to read them. Okay, so science bending reality. So we covered a bit of quantum physics. We showed you how you can use mind over matter, how mind was over machine, how cells communicate, how they use your mind over diseases, how the human is an antenna to send and receive intention and signal, and a manifesting formula, and the, how to master attracting abundance. Uh, we have meditation technology. So as you know, most people don't need, well, a lot, a lot of people don't have our technology, right? Um, and you can do all the things that I talked about in this webinar without any technology, without any of our equipment, because our minds are powerful. But just think of Qi calls are like psychic training wheels, right? They're like training wheels for us to enhance our energy, to help us to achieve those levels of, um, high levels of, of brainwaves, high levels of consciousness. It helps us to relax. It helps us to feel the itchy energy in our body so that it can activate it and be able to quiet our minds 
and to get into the alpha states. But also, just like the monks, it helps us to raise our vibrations up to a superhuman level so that you can get into those high gamma meditation states where you can get that heightened sense of awareness. And that's where you're the most powerful. You become the most powerful, you can become the most attract, uh, attractive uh, magnet. Right? You, your intention, intentions will be the strongest. If you send the intention out and say, I want to find a new job, that intention will be even stronger when you have be able to get your mind into the, those levels of consciousness. When you say, I want to attract my, my soulmate, and you have that specific intention, and you write down ahead of time, you know, what specifically th specific things that you want in this person, then your ability to attract this person will be 50,000 times what you showed in the, in, in the science that is actually multiple thousands of times more likely to happen. And if you want to attract more money, if you need more money, better finances, well, as long as you are specific and as long as it um, is aligned with your true purpose, with your heart, then you will be a very powerful attract attractor of money as well. So maybe don't limit yourselves because people think, okay, all this spiritual stuff is just for spiritual things like healing and anxiety and feeling better and things like that. But they limit themselves and say, okay, money is different. We're supposed to be poor. We're supposed to be in poverty. We're supposed to struggle. It's not true. The natural order of things is that everything is abundant. In the natural order of things is that it's infinite. The universe is infinite. So why do we limit ourselves when it comes to money? So when it comes to the point, wherever uh, this point is that if you block yourselves mentally, from something they actually prohibits any change they've done studies on these too like people who didn't believe that the energy healing was going to work it worked on them less than the people who believe okay so just believing um, helps okay? it's not it's not required you don't need to believe and then the energy healing people because a lot of these um, the AIDS patients it didn't matter whether they believed or not in the AIDS um, remote healing. It worked anyway, whether they believe or not. So, but believing it, it, it helps a lot. So if you don't believe that you're going to be successful financially or become abundant, you don't think that it's going to work for money, then it's going to be harder for you to receive that energy in your life. But if you start believing it and becoming more confident in that, then it just opens up the door for that energy to come into your life. Okay, so how, why am I saying that? It's because I, these are all things that I practice myself. These are all things that I've learned and discovered and practiced for myself. And if you don't know my story, I was uh, totally broke. I was sick. I had a chronic digestive illness I had for 10 years with no cure. And I was depressed from all the th things that was happening in my life. But I was able to transform that. Because, well, first of all, I believe that I was going to be successful. I really believed that one day I would help lots of people and become successful and and uh, achieve my full potential and really pursue the things I love to do, which is martial arts and music and and helping people and technology and, and creating things. I love creating new things. So I never gave up and I used my intention um, and also eventually I used the technology to heal myself. So I used the wand. I used the wand to heal myself in 90 days from my digestive illness. For 10 years, I had this problem. The doctors couldn't do anything. I had to take medication. And after 90 days, I cured myself. No more, no more problem, like just, just like that. And I was, I'm totally amazed. And ever since then, my life has completely changed. And then I researched more into this technology, developed develop more technologies like these, and um, helping people like you so that you can experience it too. So this is, that's why I'm saying this is like a transformational system. It's not just one thing. It transforms every, every aspect of your life. Because if you can manifest anything that you want, then you can change anything you want in reality, right? If you can change anything you want, then what's the limit? There's no limit to what you can do. So these are just tools, right? Like I said, your mind can do all these things by itself. But if you had the tool, you can get there faster. You can get there easier. Just like I said, it's like a psychic training wheel. Like not everybody can become psychic right away. Not everybody can get 
energy healing powers right away. Not everybody can can do the cheap, you know. Uh, everybody can do it, but if you want to do it better and faster, then you know these technology can help you get there. Okay, so if you um, don't have our technology, just uh, let you know where you can get them. Is you can go to our website. And right now we have a sale. So you go to the website, you go to Qi Coils or Resonant Wand Systems, and you can learn more about this stuff here. Um, Qi Coil technology, like the one you've seen today, is a portable version of electromagnetic energy. It helps you to increase your Qi energy. Uh, it comes, the, the more higher system you get, you get more frequencies. Like, so remember what I talked about, the frequencies of, um, of that have different effects on your body as if the actual substance was there. Well, we have all these frequencies. So you get the, the full system here, you get all the frequencies, you have about 200. And you also get the immune boost system, you get all the Qigong um, training, five weeks of Qigong training. So all the Qigong techniques and exercises, you need to know how to uh, learn how to develop your Qi and become a better transmitter. It's all in here. Also give you a five week course on how to attract abundance, which is like nobody else has this stuff, okay? It's based on the transformation period of it, how you can build yourself level at a time and get yourself to become the ultimate transmitter of intention. Okay. The pyramid actually, they, they, some people think that the pyramid, like the actual pyramids of Giza, are used to amplify the world's intentions. So that's what gave me the idea of creating the prosperity pyramid. So you build it one layer at a time in order to be able to transmit your intentions to the world. So I have a whole course on that. So transformation system, you get the technology, you get the course, you get the Qigong exercises, you get martial arts lessons, you get all the frequencies. So it's like basically everything that I have gathered over the last 10 years is in this system. It's like the only thing you need if you're serious about transforming yourself or anybody. And we have financing too. So if you're interested in this, I know 3000 could be a lot for some people, but uh, we have financing. You can pay as low as $140 a month, or you can do uh, finance now. So it's two-way of financing. You can click here to see if you're properly qualified. And right now you can get a free moon boost bundle if you buy. So you get the coil silver, which is a liquid to help you boost your immune, and uh, some immune boosting frequencies and the online course. So that's like $300, actually $500 bill you get for free. Everything that people buy on our store, a portion of it gets donated to healthcare workers. So, and I'm proud to say that we just donated, um, we just donated a bunch of money to Red Cross. All right, so I uh, hope that you practice this. Like I, as, as I said, uh, I'm gonna give you a free frequency. So this week, the free frequency is the, the this one. So this is the, um, Depression to courage. So I'm going to transform your depression to courage. It's the lung frequency. And it's based on the fifth element uh, metal and the color of white. So hopefully you share these with your friends so that we can get more views on our YouTube channel. Make sure that you also subscribe, like the video, make a comment that helps boost the, uh, boost the video higher. And we're going to be sending out surveys soon because um, we're building this community together. A lot of you are, are like regulars now to my webinar. So I want to create a stronger community identity and I have a bunch of questions for you to help us to build this community. So if you go to the survey, it's going to look like this and then you click get started. So first of all, we, I want to know who are we? We need a name for ourselves. And um, so you can choose any three of these to let me know what your three top ones are. If you have something else in mind, you can click other. So I'm just gonna pick any three right now and then click okay, go next one. And the next question is, what's our cause? What's our purpose? What authority are we, are we invoking? And such answers would, would be like, we seek the truth about the universe, we strive for a better, to be better. So you can, you know, don't just pick any three. Just think about it. Think about what this community is about. What kind of community you want to be part in. Uh, if you have some other suggestions that I haven't come up with, then I, you know, please give me your suggestions and type in other here. Okay. So it's just about six questions and then help us to 
really identify, you know, what we are, what we do, what we stand for, um, and then where we're going because um, it's important to, to have that together. Because together we can achieve more. I don't want this, this um, you know, group to be just me, one person. I want to be, you know, everybody to, to have a part in this so that everybody can start to do what they want to do and achieve their potential or, or achieve their life purpose. Okay, so if you want to learn about Chi Coast, go to chilifestore.com. Uh, there's also a phone number I can give you. Let's see, where is it? Yeah, so if you don't have one of our products or you want to upgrade yourself, then um, order now while supplies last. And you can go to chilifestore.com. That's Q-I-L-I-F-E. S T O R E dot com. You can call us at 1833-374-2645. 1833-374-2645. Or 1888-649-2898. 1888-649-2898. Or you can re email us at support at chilifestore.com. Alright, so thanks for coming. Another Chi Energized David Wong's Resonant Wave webinar, Meditation Technology webinar. I'm so glad to see you today. I'm so glad that I was, uh, we were able to help everybody heal and we were able to relieve people's pain and help people feel better and more energetic. Uh, I can't wait until next week. Um, so make sure you tell your friends about this so that they can join as well. Uh, we're going to do the replay of this in a couple of days. So um, we're going to send that out. So don't worry if you missed something or you just came in the last part. Um, just make sure you are on our email list and you're going to get that replay. Once again, um, when you send out YouTube or Instagram and things like that, please share with your friends or Facebook. Please share with your friends so you can build this community, reach more people because this Qi energy healing is real and you experience it today and then everybody on this planet really needs it right now, especially with the pandemic. We need to increase our vibration so that more resistant to diseases. We really need to um, boost people so that we can recover um, from all the financial difficulties and from all the uh, physical and emotional difficulties that we've been experiencing. So let's let's work together as a family, as a as a group, as a team, to raise the vibration of the planet and to and to really make a difference. Okay. So until next time, use the chi and prosper.